Hello and welcome to another video for Midas Touch Toys, Games and Collectibles. And today we're looking at uh, the 1967, I'm going to say 1967 release, by Dinky Toys from the Jerry Anderson series of die cast models. And this particular model we're going to be looking at today is from Jerry Anderson's TV series Joe 90. And the vehicle we're looking at is of Joe's car. Um, the jet air car, the flying car. Um, although it's, I mean, it says on this one it's Joe's car, but um, it was actually driven by Mac, uh, Professor McLean, uh, in the television series. So anyway, but this is the this is the item we're looking at today. Now, I didn't think they started producing this particular model until 1969, um, and I think they made it up until about 1976. But on stamped on the back of this model. It's got the year, which is 1967, so maybe it was a couple of years earlier, or maybe they started manufacturing a couple of years earlier, and they didn't release it for, until two years later. So, anyway, this is the box it comes in, and it says, uh, direct from Joe 90, you've got a Joe 90 logo, and there is an image of Joe's car, or the Jet Air car, whatever you like to call it, and it's Dinky Toys number 102. Okay, so that is the front of the box. That's a really nice image of the actual car itself, which is, um, yeah, even though it's an artwork image, it's very good. Let's just turn the box to the side, and it says Dinky Toys Joe's Car, based on the Jerry Anson TV series Joe 90, Association Television um, Overseas Limited, licensed by Century 21, Merchandise Limited, London, England. If you can see that. Now, I can't read the rest of it because that is in a foreign language. So we come back to that in a second. We turn the box around to the opposite side and we got the same again. Direct from Joe 90. Uh, the same image. Dinky Toys 102, Joe's car. And if I go around to the... Oh, I need to turn the box over to the other side. Uh, and it says on this side, Dinky Toys, Joe's car. Automatic opening wings and extending tail fins. Uh, flashing engine exhaust, plated twin aero turbine engines, jeweled headlights, independent suspension, and there is a, a um, almost like a blueprint image or or a shadow image of the model itself. Okay, At the end of the box. Dinky Toys 102 Joe's car, and it's pretty much the same on the other end. Yeah, Dinky Toys 102 Joe's car, as you can see. Okay. So that is the model. Oh, that, sorry, that is the box. What we're going to do now is go over the box and we are going to take it out and have a look at it in more detail. Okay, so I have removed the model from the box and you can see um, the model comes on this display plinth um, and the display plinth, plinth says, uh, direct from Joe 90, and again, you've got the Joe 90 logo, you've got Dinky Toys, and there you've got an artwork image of the model of Joe's car. And it's got automatic opening wings and extending tail fins, flashing engine exhaust, independent suspension. I'm just going to move the model out of the way. And we're going to pick this up. And it says Dinky Toys 102 Joe's car. It's a little bit worn where the model's been sitting on it. Dinky Toys 102. And the same on this side, Dinky Toys 102. And the rest of it is completely, that's just yellow to match the box, I'd imagine. Um, and that is it. That's the stand, or the display plinth, if you like. Um, but let's have a look at the Joe's car itself. Now, this is always one of my favourites when I was a kid. Um, being that the, the car was a flying car. I mean, it just made it so special for us, especially when we were watching our favourite television programme, Joe 90. Um, and the Max car came out, and Mac was taking Joe somewhere, and they would um, either be stuck in traffic or being pursued by somebody, and they fly. Take flight, and away they go. So it's got the wings, and the wings come out by the press of a button, so you can see you've got the button on the bottom here. And if we press that button, out pop the wings so you've got the the back wings there and you've got the front wings there and that comes out um and obviously then the aircraft can take off and it can go into flight mode um okay and to close them up you just close the two wings together and that reloads the spring mechanism and um closes the the fin the back fins up as well 
Okay, you can see in the cockpit. Now, I think that's supposed to be Joe 90 driving the car. Uh, although he never drives the car in the TV program. But perhaps he's had Professor McLean's brainwave transferred into the big rat. And he's now able to drive the car, which is what his missions are all about. Um, so, yeah, so there's the, the cockpit is all intact and the glass for the cockpit is all intact. And you can see this one's got the chrome engines. There was a version that had the red engines, but I don't think they were. I think that was coming right to the end of the last few models that were produced. This one's all chrome. You've got the light at the back there, which we'll come to in a second. Um, and you've got the sprung suspension at the back there. You can see the suspension. Oh, maybe I'm not far enough back. There you go. So you can see the springness in the back wheels there. as because it's on a sprung suspension. And the same at the front. You can see that the suspension pops down. Uh, you've got jeweled headlights, as you can see at the front there and if i turn it over underneath you can see well let's read what we got on the bottom here so you've got the on off switch here it's currently it's on off you've got the dinky toys joe's car um and that is uh made under license from atv entertainment uh, sorry atv overseas 1967 now that's why i said 1967 you can just see that on the bottom of the, of the model there um, i don't want to come in too quick because i'll lose the focus there we go so atv uh, overseas limited 1967 and you can see it's got dinky toys 101 and meccano limited england there i'm oh, sorry dinky toys 102 and meccano limited england there um now as i say this is stamped 1967 now, maybe that's when the license was granted for them to produce the model. But I say I didn't think they were actually out until 1969 to 1976. I thought that was the eight-year run of this model. Um, but as I say, I could be wrong. I don't know for sure. Um, but, okay, now, there is a battery. I have put a battery in the bottom of this one um, so that we can see it lit up. So I'm going to turn it on. And there we can see the light at the back is lit up and it should be flashing. So it's just about starting to flash. Uh, so you can see that, I don't know why it's not it's not flashing properly, but it's um, at least it lights up because in most of, the, of these models you have, that lighted mechanism doesn't work anymore. Um, they don't light up at all. Now that's on full now, uh, but it should actually flash just like, like this so if i push the the model a bit it's, it's flashing a little bit it's dimming and, and, and the light's dimming and getting stronger a bit but uh, you know we're talking something that's 57 years old um it's uh, you know if anything's not going to work properly it's going to be this um but it, it at least you know the lightning system is actually still working on this and you can see it is lit up and it does look the part lit up um i mean it, it may start to flash after a while it's still it is still dimming and flashing a little bit as you can see um but um but not quite as as it should be i don't think i think i'm sure it's meant to do more than that okay well let's turn it off because i don't want to drain the battery um let's have a look at the size wise so we are looking at a total length of from the very front of the nose tip of the nose cone to the back of the wheels we're looking at 14 centimeters um if we measure across the widest point of here which is probably across the back wheels we're looking at seven and a half centimeters and the front wheels are seven centimeters but if we extend the wings and we measure across the wingspan we're looking at 13 centimeters and then height wise again if we measure from the bottom of the let's just close those wings up the bottom of the wheel to the top of the um cockpit the cockpit roof really i should say we're looking at seven centimeters so that gives you a good idea of the size of this particular model and what a wonderful model it is i mean it's, it was say it was always one of my favorites and this i know this particular one is one of the the earliest versions that they produced um and that's again because of the you got the white stripes on the wings you got the white tip on the top of the 
bar that runs across from the cockpit to the across the, the um, chrome engines and to the light um, and on the later ones they didn't have the or some of them didn't have the on off switch on mentioned as on off and the, some of the later ones also uh, didn't have the um, the licensing information at the bottom there that was taken off so but this is one of the very early ones and uh, hence the 1967 date stamp on the bottom um, and yeah as you can see it is such a lovely model and it does display really nice if we put it well actually i'm going to, have to close the wings up to put it back on the display plinth and the holes on the display plinth have somewhat elongated because of the the model been sitting in it for a while but it does look absolutely fantastic on display um and really does look the part and again it was another fantastic model that dinky toys produced so million dollar question how well did this do well for it to be redone um re-released over a period of eight years it obviously done very well the sales on this again with when joe knighty was on television um was when it was first released um i can remember for my birthday i got um sam's car and i was incredibly disappointed because i wanted the joe's flying car and a lot of my friends had joe's flying car but i didn't i only got the uh, sam louvers car um even though it was a great car it's, it's a, a one of the pullback ones um uh it was j just a a, a a a very very good car i should say don't get me wrong i'm not going to put it down at all because it is a very very good model but for me as a little boy when i wanted this one and i got the one i didn't want it was i was very disappointed um however um that was for my birthday and the christmas come along i did finally get joe's car so um but it did as i say this model ran for eight years it's hugely popular um the back in the 1960s uh late 60s when joe 90 first came out um it was a big thing uh with the dinky toys and then of course the television series um moved into the seven we moved into the seven the seven television series was then on saturday morning television for kids um, and it was on weekly, so you had Thunderbirds, um, you had Joe 90, you had Captain Scarlet, you had all the, really all the Jerry Anderson television shows being run on the Saturday morning, so it was Saturday morning kids television, um, and they run them again throughout, throughout the 70s, and so the TV, the, the, the models were, were still very popular with the kids really right up until the late 70s when the series then, uh, came off air again and uh, didn't come back on air until uh the 90s um i think 93 or something like that it was back on uh, mainstream television um but um during that time with during that initial run um of years from the 60s and 70s it was incredibly popular we had no way of re-watching our television programs as kids back then there was no videos or streaming services available so if we didn't see the TV show when it was shown on television, we had to wait for the reruns. And like I say, for the television, children's television, they did rerun them quite regularly. So it wasn't as if you're going to miss out totally. But if you're a Joe Knight, big Joe Knight fan and it's series finished and Captain Scarlet come on, you was a bit disappointed. Um, but uh, but there we are. Anyway, so yes, the model's done exceptionally well. They sold, I don't know how many, but big numbers of this particular model um now hl's question do they come out on platforms yes of course they do there were so many of these made they do appear on the platforms in various different conditions so you can always find them in excellent condition with very very little paint loss if any um you can find them as good as this one very rarely do you find the ones where the light still works? That is one of the big pluses on this particular model we're looking at today is because the light still works. Most of the models that we've had, this particular model we've had, the lights have not worked. And no matter what you do, you just cannot seem to get it to work. But this is very good because it 
the lighting system is still working. Um, yeah, so like I say, there's loads and loads of these that appear on the platforms. Usually, well, they're, they're, most of them are without the boxes. Um, they're all, most of them are chipped and damaged and have been played with and well loved over the years. And there's skirmishes, some are missing the, the cockpit and the pilot, some are missing the uh, red um, uh, light at the back. Um, some of them, the, the wings don't pop open properly anymore. Some are missing the, the, the booster rockets, the chrome rockets. There, there's so, so many different things. Some are missing tires, but then you've got some that are in fantastic condition. You've also got some that people have restored. So there's a lot of variety out there on the platforms. The only thing I would say is if you're buying on a platform, as I always do, be vigilant about what you're buying. Look at the item, look at the images because somebody's definition of very good condition could be somebody else's definition of acceptable condition. And there's a big gap there. Um, and it's not, uh, most of them are not um, um, really, it, it's, it's all down to the seller's perspective of what the condition of the vehicle is, uh, of the model is at the end of the day. So just be very, very careful and make sure you have a good look at the, of the images before you actually order. Uh, or alternatively, this particular model we have available on our Midas Touch website, which you can get to quite simply by clicking the link below. It will take you straight to the website where you'll be able to find this and many other vintage Jerry Anderson items and many other vintage toys, games and collectibles come to that. There's over 10,000 products currently available on the website for you to view and purchase at your leisure. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we're uploading videos for every new item that goes into the website. There will be something for everybody, and I am absolutely positive that this is something you will not want to miss, because we literally have thousands and thousands of new products, which we're shooting videos for and uploading on a daily basis. So if there is something in particular you're looking for, something old that you've never been able to find, something quirky you might want to buy for a friend, or maybe just something from your childhood that you'd like to own again to help you recuperate those long lost childhood memories, well, stay tuned, keep watching, because you never know the next item we upload could be that item you've been looking for. Okay, that is it for me on this particular item. I do hope you've enjoyed reviewing this wonderful Joe 90 Joe's car with me. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again next video.